All right, we're still in chapter 12, section one, angles of triangles. And these are the two examples we're gonna attack in today's video. Um, we're gonna first talk about how to classify a triangle that's just given to us on a coordinate grid. And then we're gonna deal with this exterior angle problem down here. Uh, both of these we'll be doing today. This one will be pretty quick. We're gonna spend the bulk of our time on this one. So let's jump to our whiteboard. All right. So our first example for the day, we're given a triangle on a coordinate grid, triangle OPQ. Okay, and all of our geometric object, objects will be named by its vertices. Um, and so triangle OPQ is given on our coordinate grid and we're asked to classify it or name it to group it based on its side length. So I'll remind you, there are three different ways to classify a triangle by its side lengths, either one, it's going to be scalene. If it's scalene, none of these three side lengths will be congruent to each other. Second option is isosceles. Basically, two of the sides have to be congruent to each other. And just based on looking at this, we can see that obviously this guy is a quite short side compared to these other two. So this guy is kind of eliminated from contention. So the third option of equilateral is quite obviously eliminated because this is such a shorter side than these other two. So if all three sides had been congruent, it would have been equilateral. Quite obviously, visually, it is not. And so it's going to be either scalene or isosceles. And the only way I can do that is by showing are any of the sides congruent to each other. And it's kind of pointless to try finding out like, well, is this side OP going to be congruent to PQ? Because quite obviously, this is only a fraction of this length. And same thing for OQ. But isosceles is still in play because it is possible. It's not really easy to tell whether OQ is going to be congruent to PQ. And that's too close to call. They're definitely both longer than OP over here on the side. But what we want to figure out is, is OQ congruent to PQ? If it is, then it's what we call isosceles. If it is not, then none of the side lengths will be congruent to each other, and it's what we would call scalene. So in order to solve this, we're going to be using a formula that we've used in the past called the distance formula. So here is the distance formula for coordinate grids. Uh, just to remind you, this is loosely based off of the Pythagorean theorem in that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. The C squared in a coordinate grid refers to some diagonal line that we're creating with the X and Y elements. So that's where it comes from. Uh, but we're, in this case, just going to be plugging in coordinate points to find out the length of OQ and then PQ. So let's start with OQ. If I want to find the distance of OQ, the distance from O to Q, then I'm going to be using this formula. And I'm going to be starting with this massive square root, and I'm just going to start plugging in these values. So here's what I've advised you to do when we've done this in the past. Um, start with this kind of blank structure and throw in the minus signs inside the parentheses. The reason we do that is just mostly so that we get used to um, now I'm just plugging in coordinate points. And if I do come across a negative, I'll be able to visually see minus a negative, and I'll know to change that to a plus. And we might see that in a second. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that I'm going to be plugging in the x values of O and Q. So I have a 0 in the x position, the first position there, and a 6 in the x position there. So I have 0 minus 6. And it doesn't matter whether it goes 6 minus 0 or 0 minus 6. The reason why is because ultimately this is going to be squared. And whether it's a negative 6 squared or a positive 6 squared, I'm going to get the same thing. So the order doesn't matter, but the sign does. The fact that these both were positive is why I can just write them as they are. Okay, we're going to run into that problem. We get over here to P with that negative 1. But now I'm going to move on to my Y values. So the second position here. So there's a 0 again here for O, but then I have a 3 here. So again, just plugging these values in, be careful with your negatives, and I end up with this in my uh, distance formula. So just doing a little bit of uh, work in our heads just to save a little bit of room. Um, I, and I'm just going to do order of operations at this point, so I deal with inside the parentheses first. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 
Okay, so just be careful about that. None of that's terribly difficult. If you need help on a calculator, feel free to use that. But now what I'm going to do is before I move on to my next step is I'm going to move into the, the next step in that PEMDAS, which is to say like now I have a negative 6 squared. 0 minus 6 is negative 6, but now I'm going to do the exponent. So I'm going to square negative 6, and here's where I'm going to get positive 36. I'm going to deal with the square root right now just so that we don't get confused. Um, so just moving on, we're on just doing our work at this point. So again, where did this come from? That was 0 minus 6, negative 6 squared is positive 36 now. That's why it didn't matter the order here. And now I have plus the result of my other y values. So 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and then negative 3 squared is positive 9. Again, that's why that order doesn't matter necessarily. Just keep track of your negatives. So now I'm here. And now I can see, let's just erase this a little bit. Now I can see that 36 plus 9 is what I have to do next. And I'm going to get 36 plus 9 equaling 45. Just don't forget about your square root. And get the square root of 45. Now if I were to do that in a calculator just to see what happens, many of you would probably recognize that I can't take the square root of that, at least get a friendly number. The closest perfect squares to this are 49, which would be 7. Uh, or 36, which would be 6. Um, but if I were to do square root of 45 in my calculator, I get this 6.7 approximately. Uh, at this point, I'm okay with just the square root. This is what we would call an exact answer. This is what we would call an estimate because it has this continuing decimal. And if we were to round it, we'd say 6.7. Well, 6.7 is not technically square root of 45. That's a rounding, an estimate. So for right now, we're just going to work with this because this is going to be easier to recognize if it's the same. Okay, so what's the distance from O to Q? Square root of 45. We did it in our calculator just to see an estimate, so it's about 6.7 units. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is that's just the distance from O to Q. Now, I want the distance from P to Q because this is the only other really option that may be close. So PQ, I'm going to use the same distance formula. And again, I'm going to plug into the same structure. I'm just going to be plugging in different coordinate points because now I have a different point I'm dealing with. And so now from P to Q, now I'm going to, again, I'm going to focus on my X values, negative one and six. There's my negative value. So just be careful about the sign. Had my negative been second, so had you done six minus a negative one, just keep in mind that minus a negative turns into plus addition. All right now my Y values, two and three. Just be careful about going in the same order. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter because the squared will take care of it. I just try and be consistent about that thing. Um, when I'm starting, like if I'm starting from P, always start from P. If I'm starting from Q, always start from Q. All right. So in this case, now I'm going to jump the work right here, just like I did last time. So I'm going to do a little two for one uh, work right now. So negative one minus six, that turns into negative seven. And then negative seven squared becomes positive 49. And just to show you that again, the, um, that the order didn't matter, had I had six first and negative one second, six minus a negative one turns into six plus one, which is now seven, seven squared gets me back to 49. Okay, and then over here, two minus three, that's negative one. Negative one squared gives me positive one. So it was still plus in between from right there. And then the 2 minus 3, negative 1 uh, squared, but gives me positive 1. And so I get this as my result. And in just kind of simplifying it a little bit, I get the square root of 49 plus 1 or 50. Which again, can't take a perfect square of that. That's going to be awfully close to 7 because square root of 49 is 7. So 50 is going to be close to that. But if I do it on the calculator, I get something close to 7, about 7.1. But more importantly, I can see that both of these don't equal each other. So to answer this first question, going back to what the, was being asked in this problem, classify it by its side lengths. I'm essentially looking for are any of the sides congruent or equal to each other? Okay. In this case, obviously, side PQ does not match OQ, 
So those aren't congruent. And visually speaking, OP definitely is not going to be anywhere close to either of these. So what does that mean? That means that this triangle must be scalene. Why? What does scalene mean? It means none of the three sides are congruent to each other. And we proved that right here. These are the only two options that might have matched each other. And you might get some graphs where all three sides look a lot closer. So you may have to find out whether a third side will be anywhere close to the other ones or match them. Um, in this case, it was simple enough to just check the two sides. So it was simple enough to just say, well, this must be scalene because obviously that third side won't match. All right. So now for the second part of the question says, is this a right triangle? Because it's possible for something to be scalene and right. Um, so that's still available. And the only way that this can be a right triangle is if the Pythagorean theorem is going to be true. If this side length squared plus that side length squared equals that side length squared. And for Pythagorean theorem, the only thing I really need to be careful about is where is my hypotenuse? What would be C? And so visually, again, we're going to kind of break down like where would the 90 degree angle be? Well, obviously that can't be 90 degrees. So it's one of these two. And we can see that this one's kind of wedged a bit more. This is one that looks pretty close to 90. So this is the one we're going to check. If this is 90 degrees, that's the hypotenuse, PQ. So I would use square root of 50 as my resulting side. But here's how I can go about solving for this. So first thing I want to do is find my third side length. OP. I'm going to go through the same process as before with our distance formula. A little sloppy here. And but now I'm going to go from O to P. So I have 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, and then 0, 2. Going through this pretty quickly at this point. Uh, now jumping to what the distance from O to P is. 0 minus negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 squared is 1. And then 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And negative 2 squared gives me 4. And so distance from O to P is going to be the square root of 1 plus 4 or the square root of 5. Okay. Oh, I realized that the other one's in green. Let me go ahead and fix that. So the square root of 5. Obviously not equal to those two confirming our scalene measurement, but now's what here's what we're going to check We need to check whether or not Pythagorean theorem is going to work does a squared plus b squared equal c squared Okay, and again, how do I know which one's going to be c c has to be the longest one So visually speaking, I know that the square root of 50 has to be the long side Which means if this is a right triangle, this is the one that's going to be the hypotenuse and so here's what I'm checking. Does square root of 5 squared plus the square root of 45 squared equal the square root of 50 squared? There's side length OP. There's side length OQ. There's side length PQ, my supposed hypotenuse. Now, yeah, square roots of these numbers make it, things look a little funky, but here's how quickly we can solve for it. Squared and square roots cancel out. And so what I get is square root of 5 squared is just 5. Square root of 45 squared is just 45. And square root of 50 squared gives me 50. Does 5 plus 45 equal 50? You betcha. This must be a right triangle. Why? Because Pythagorean theorem worked. And Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. So that's how you could solve for coordinate grid stuff. All right. So in less than a minute left in this video, we're going to solve this one using exterior angle theorem, which says that this exterior angle here, MKJ, has to match both of these other angles, the other angles, the one not making a linear pair. And so this simply becomes write an equation. My exterior angle, 2x minus 5 degrees, has to equal both of these together, which is just x degrees plus 70 degrees. That's what I meant by together, by addition. And so now this just becomes a chapter one problem. Solve for my variable. If I subtract x from both sides, I get x minus 5 equals 70. And then if I add 5 to the other side, I get x equals 75 degrees. And there we go. You set yourself up with that equation. At that point, it becomes chapter one algebra.